Hello everyone, this tutorial is about dirt maps, creating automated dirt maps and base textures for your objects using a script and about some other scripts that will help you make base textures and base unwraps for kits of objects. So it's of course a tutorial about texturing and unwrapping multiple objects and it's about time versus quality. This script is made thinking of a way to texture objects a bit faster but keeping some of the quality and the effects that you get through painting custom textures. Of course, the fastest way to texture an object is to put something tileable, already made, and not customized for the shape of the object. But then that's what you don't get, something that is adapted to the shape of the object, which means texture that will have differences based on the dirt that might accumulate in corners and the scratched edges and other effects that have to be painted on the object. So what's an automatized way to get this kind of effect without painting them manually? Well, there's ambient occlusion that does something like that. It gets the shape of the object and what is recessed, occluded, and what is exposed. Standard ambient occlusion gets what is occluded where generally dirt will accumulate in real world objects. But it's also possible to get the edges and the exposed areas by inverting the effect of the ambient occlusion. And by inverting, I mean flipping the normals of the object. There would be probably many other interesting ways to create base textures based on the shape. Uh, similar to this one, this uses ray trace ambient occlusion. It's also possible to use vertex color ambient occlusion, but I personally don't use it very often because with environment meshes the density of the vertices is generally very discontinuous you have some meshes and some areas of the mesh which are very dense with vertices and some other areas that are just not detailed enough to get a decent ambient occlusion through vertex color but it's fast so it could be included in the script as a way to generate some data for your texture and also I guess with some custom code it would be possible to create uh, some edge highlighting effect that would work even better maybe more reliably than through ambient occlusion in fact if there's any coder interested in working on this I've been working on this script for the first version the second version that was rewritten in a much better code is by Sergei Schrabrin what I can do for uh, scripting, I, my skills are limited to using operations in Blender and do batch operations, create UIs, do a series of operations in a row and get a script out of that. I guess for this kind of maps, to make an even better dirt map, that would require some coding, ray tracing or working on the textures with uh, blur operations and using the wireframe and then passing it through some filters to get the edge highlight in a different way and that could be really interesting. But let's go forward with a first quick example on how the script works. You basically have to select some object, run the script and see the result then tweak. Let's do that. I have a another scene prepared. Once installed the script is then in the render tab under batch bake and it has a button to run it. It will calculate for a while because it has a few ray tracing operations to do, namely three times ambient occlusion baking. So it can take from 10-30 seconds for a couple of objects to maybe even 20 minutes for a high resolution, high number of samples map for many objects. That's fine because you're baking a, a map that even if you're doing an animation will be saved on disk and you don't need to recalculate every frame. And you generally want to keep the resolution of the map low, spares some memory, but increase the samples that you use rendering so you get a noise free texture. Now, let's see the parameters in detail. The first thing you have is a text box for the name of the image. The default is patch bake, but you might want to call it like, if this is a kit of objects, kit one, with the name of the 
group of objects that will be using this map. Then the UV map, you can see in this starting scene that the dirt map slot is red because these objects don't have a, a UV layer called dirt map. That is not a problem because you can see here this checkbox that says auto unwrap if this is on. Uh, even if there's no dirt map UV map existing already, it will be created. And what the script will do is running smart UV project from object mode with some margin and some default options. And then you get a basic unwrapping for these objects. And most importantly, you get them packed together. But we'll see more about the packing later in this tutorial. So let's say we have a name. Dirt map is na good name as any for your uh, dirt map UVs. And auto wrap on. Then the resolution. This is standard 1K. But let's say we want a 2K texture. And then the distances, the contrast and the sample. This is where you set the final look and final quality of the map. Distance is for the ambient occlusion. So this dark black areas in corners, recessed parts of the object. Inverse is for the edge highlight, the white. The contrast will sharpen the contrast between these two areas. And it's mainly used a way to try to keep and have more of this gray area. Because the purpose of this script is to create a base texture for then either making a material using this as a contour map or directly use this as a base, as a guideline to paint your texture. So what you want is dark areas for the dirt areas, edge highlight, but you want also a fairly big amount of areas that are flat, 50% gray. So by changing the radiuses and the contrast, you can tweak how much black, white and 50% gray you get in your texture based on the size of your objects, basically. Now I'm reducing the radiuses and increasing the contrast and we'll see how it comes out. And here you see different result. But generally the values I use will be something like a value in meters like one, two meters, five meters for the normal dark ambient occlusion for objects that are around one meter or more in size and a value that is one tenth to one hundred of the normal ambient occlusion for the inverse because, well, first of all, you only need to get the edges. And second, the inverted ambient occlusion is somewhat less reliable. Meaning that depending on how you model your object, if the mesh has disconnected parts that are ne nearly overlapping or other parts that like these things here are very shallow and have some another face of the mesh behind, you'll probably get too much why too much edge highlight do you get nice edge highlight on the big shapes but then you get a lot of unwanted it's not an error it's just how ambient occlusion works but you get a lot of unwanted uh, unexpected results with the inverted normal ambient occlusion while with the standard ambient occlusion you generally what you get is just what you wanted for the dirt effect and so you generally keep the inverse ambient occlusion at low radius. And here's another example with low contrast. 
and small radius for the edge highlight. Now let's see the breakdown of the operations that a script does. What you get out of the script is a single image, the one with a suffix dirt, in this case kid one dirt. But to get to this image, the script has to do a few in-between steps. What you want to get out of the script is the image and use it for whatever is needed. But you can see there's one ambient occlusion image, ambient occlusion number two and ambient occlusion inverted. And also there's a material that will be used to merge all these passes into the final image, which contains all the information. Information from the ambient occlusion, the dirt in corners, the information from the inverted ambient occlusion, and you can see here that this is just your average ambient occlusion, but it's on the edges because uh, before running ambient occlusion bake this second time, the script will flip the normals of the meshes, just like you would do in edit mode with flip normals. Then the script will also have to invert the color. There's also a third bake of ambient occlusion, which is called AO2, and it's again uh, standard ambient occlusion, not with flip normals, with a smaller radius, and then it gets applied on top of everything to eliminate some of the excessive edge highlight, because you would get in these areas, which are occluded actually, which are recessed, you would still get some edge highlight that doesn't work that well. It's It fixes a bit of over edge highlighting. So the script will generate these three images and then it will also generate a material that's called AO comp uh, because it will compose it together the various steps and will generate some textures out using the images for the ambient occlusion that is set to be multiplied on the base color of this material which is a 50% gray, a bit more than 50% gray. Then it will add the inverted ambient occlusion but set it to negative so that you get white edges not black edges of course and then we'll again multiply the third uh, ambient occlusion pass. You can also see that there's different multipliers 1.1 1.35 and 1 and these have their own multipliers tweaked to get better results but that you control globally when you set the contrast here so you don't really have to worry about this material unless you want to customize the script and do your own version but this is what the batch bake operation will do I just said that the base material starts from 50% gray, then the ambient occlusion gets multiplied on top so that you have a base area, base color that is 50% gray, which would translate if you use this as a contour map for texture, for painting texture or for making a material directly in the nodes. Uh, this 50% gray area is where the normal material will go, and so the darkened area will be applied on top of that and make it darker and then the white edges will be applied added on top of that and make it brighter but still this way of mixing things together is designed with the idea of getting big area of flat color and this flat gray areas will be where the base texture for your material will go like normal metal for example while in the dark areas you will have maybe rust in the highlight areas, white areas, you will have uh, scratches, but you need a big enough area to where to put the normal material. And last segment, we'll look now at the mapping and UV packing. Last but not least, because it's really important to have efficient packing and mapping for your textures. What we've seen in the first run of the script was the auto unwrap that generated this kind of UVs. These objects are very simple, but I picked them to be a bit problematic. So we have a mesh with concentric 
parts with circles inside other circles and the other unwrap, the smart UV project, will cut them in different circles and put them one next to the other leaving a huge amount of empty space. This one, well, it's a bit better. It does have some L shapes that get packed not ideally. And the third one is a organic shape, which Smart UV will break down in lots of pieces and generate an uh, insane amount of seams and discontinuities. Of course, the ambient occlusion bake won't create seams. It works in over seams. But you have the packing question, so if the island, the UV island is too small and too close to something else, you'll get some artifacts. So Auton Wrap is not really doing the best job for these meshes, but we have a few other options. If we want to use anything else than a Smart UV Project, we have to uncheck Auto Unwrap in this batch bake script. And one thing we can do is unwrap them individually and each one we make a UV map with the same name, unwrap in this case. And I've unwrapped the organic mesh with the mirror modifier and I unwrapped this with a few seams keeping it very continuous. This one I've broken down some of the parts with some additional seams so that you get more compact UV island shapes, basically done modifying the seams from Smart UV Project. I did Smart UV Project, then went to UVs and seams from islands, and then added and removed some seams to get a better packing. It's still not a very good packing for a single object, but it will get better once everything is packed together. Of course, the more stuff you have inside one map, the smaller the pieces are, the better are the chances that the automatic pack will put them closer and leave less unused space. Which is another good reason for packing multiple objects inside one texture, as long as they are using the same material. And this one is a cylinder, basically, so I just put one seam, one seam around the base, and unwrapped it at a single UV island without discontinuities. And I also taken the base and scaled it down a bit, knowing that probably this face is not that important, won't be seen, so we can give it a little less UV space. So I've done a custom unwrap with different techniques based on the object and some human manual intervention. And now I want to bake this on a single texture. You can see this has been packed with the auto pack, automatic packing control P to occupy the whole space of this UV. But then we want the three objects to be packed together and there's a very simple and very quick script to do that it was done by Campbell Barton during Project Mango. And unfortunately, at this moment, small script, it's just a text block you have to load and run manually, having selected the objects you want. But this is something that could be added as an independent script or part of the batch bake. But it works. You just run the script. The UVs that were taking the whole space are now sharing the space using a pretty decent standard packing. So a bit of a recap about the packing. This is an example. It's the UVs and the textures for these gribble kits, for one of these two gribble kits. This is what you get out of the auto unwrap, which has uh, one issue that is the fill holes that was available in uh, 2.49 and it's still not back yet in 2.6 so you can see this border around the, this box being unwrapped into four shapes that take a huge amount of space relative to the 
amount of objects in this image and leaving completely empty space inside. So this was the first version of the texture. Then later with the object packing script, uh, I did custom manual unwrap on each piece of this gribble kit and then just selected them, run the script and what I got is this texture which has still some issues with uh, fill holes so uh, C-shaped or L-shaped islands that don't get filled with the smaller pieces but it's in you know, all pretty good enough and there would be a third level of refinement of this kind of UVs for multiple objects that would be this is completely aut automatic this is manual unwrap and automatic packing and the last step would be completely manual so uh, defining seams and then packing manually but for that you need some kind of temporary join tool that will allow you to pack uh, the objects the multiple objects as if they were one you can also do it using as reference the show other objects but you cannot interact with other objects you can only see them there was a first script i tried to do that would uh, join the objects then you would work on them as if they were one and then it would take the actual mesh data and split it back into the original objects but it was really too dangerous and it would uh, break too often and leave you with unusable objects later after i was done with the dome for the church sergey made a script for uh, kiart and rob to pack the multiple textures for the various pieces of the church into one that would just copy the uv data back to the original mesh which is safer i actually tried it and it worked perfectly but it wouldn't work on the test objects that i was using for this uh, tutorial uh, it would mess up a bit the vertices position and the uv so it still needs a bit of work but anyway the results you can get with a manual unwrapping and automatic packing are quite good and a good balance of human intervention and human work versus quality now these images are instead some of the assets for the dome this is the base of the dome that uses the result of a batch bake these are three different objects some of them instanced also directly you see the dirt map it's loaded into the node tree and by blending operations it creates the material with rust and edge scratches and we'll see about this kind of materials in the next tutorial uh, the batch bake was also used on the quad bot Kiaton used it i think just as a reference which is also another useful way to use this script even if you don't put the texture itself into the material to the node tree but you take it into gimp or your painting program and use it as a reference to then do the accurate manual painting of every scratch and every stain you can still use it as a pretty useful reference these two kits are the generic uh, gribble kits science fiction gribble pieces placed around the domes and in various parts this one is uh, actual street furniture from amsterdam that you can see in the real world amsterdam and this one is inspired by the street furniture and the designs of the Amsterdam school but made into sci-fi and you can see also some typical issues of the batch bake script where you have shallow overlapping pieces you get too much edge highlight and this ones for example here here and here were unpainted in texture paint mode to fix some of the most obvious errors while some of the most typical errors remain in those shallow and overlapping areas and we'll see about dealing with this also in the material using these dirt maps in the cycles materials in the next video so hope you enjoyed this tutorial see you soon